In the not too distant future, maybe Sunday AD, there was a guy named Joel, not too different from you or me. He worked at Gizmonic Institute, just another face in a red jumpsuit. He did a good job cleaning up the place, but his boss didn't like him, so they shot him in the space. Bring it down, bring it down, and uh, back up again. Back up. Good. Hey, Cambot, bring it in a little bit. Wow. 30 seconds to commercial sign. Wow, well, it's really good to see you again. As you can see, we've done a lot to change the ship, and now we're working on Tom Servo's voice, so there's really a lot going on. And I have a terrible toothache. Oh. Uh, he's a robot. He doesn't have any teeth, but don't tell. Huh? What? Commercial sign in 10 seconds. Anyway, I'm really glad you're here, so stick around. Commercial sign in five, four, three, two, one. Commercial sign now. See ya. Uh, don't use Novocaine, it uh, dulls the senses. Okay, get ready, open. Let's mm -hmm. go. Come on, mm -hmm. open it up. Come on, come okay. on, open. Uh -huh. Come on. Okay, I got, I got it here. Ah. Okay. Ah. Oh, we're back. Hey, oh, Camba, push it back a little bit. So much has been going. You can let go of him. So much has been going on on the ship, but the biggest thing is Tom Servo's new voice. We're just about to show it to you. Oh. All right, give her a rip, Tom. Let's see how it sounds. Warning! Danger! Danger! Will Robinson! Uh, Warning! Wait, danger. hold, 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 hold it. I don't think, I don't think it's quite Warning. there yet. Okay. Okay, there. Give it a shot. Daisy, Daisy. No, that's not quite. Easy. Okay, here we got it. There we go. That here it is. Oh, hello, world. Happy birthday. What do you think? Pretty neat, huh? Oh, it's a world of difference. You know, Joel, I'm just finally realizing I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. <laughs> oh, look sharp, you goons. It's the uh, Dark Overlords. Uh, hi, welcome to Deep 13. Would you like to try our smooth, creamy thruster buster? Where's Dr. Earhart and Dr. Forrester? Well, I'm Frank. Uh, I'm new here. Uh, as for Dr. Forrester, uh, he stepped out for a moment. As for Dr. Earhart, he's missing. Oh. But as far as you space monkeys are concerned, I'm the new marshal in town. That's right. I'm the god. I'm the god! May I take your order, please? <laughs> Uh, yeah, what's in a thruster buster? A uh, thruster buster is a thick four pound slice of our oven tempered meal food uh, covered with a wet runny blister of growth compost, onions, lettuce, mayonnaise, tomato, special sauce, skanked while you sleep. Would you like some fries with that? Uh, no, we'll have uh four solar burgers and a uh, four space spuds. Uh, would you like something to drink with that? Uh, yeah, uh, what do you guys want to drink? Uh, I'll have a Splunky uh, mango. Uh, cream Splunky for me, please. Mix! Okay, I'll have a mango too. Okay, so that's four solar burgers, four space spuds, uh, four splunkies, uh, two mango, one mix, and one cream. Uh, are you, are you going to be eating out or will you be dining in with us? Uh, oh, what the heck. Uh, we'll eat in. Uh, bring us down to Earth. Uh, that's the button on the left over there. 
Got it. Oh, Jerry, listen, I need you right away set up for ta a table for four, okay? Thanks a lot. Uh, Sylvia, I need you to take these thruster busters to this address right here. Listen, no burrowing up through the bedrooms this time, okay? Thanks. Oh, how's our new enterprise going, Bobby? Uh, sold another one. Oh. That's right. Uh, just sold our first order to dine in, as a matter of fact. Oh, Frank. Frank, look at me when I'm talking to you. We don't do dine in. We only do takeout. Who wants to dine in anyway? Oh, it's uh, it's Joel and the robots. I, I was just about to bring them down. What? No. Uh oh, looks like the Splunky's about to hit the fan. There. Now, Frank, go get this week's invention exchange. And as for you, my takeout troglodyte, the only thing you're going to be served is more bad movies. Now, I know Frank isn't much, but he's showing a lot of promise in the invention area. And I don't think you're going to be able to put one over on us this week. But you go ahead, Joel. Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. Hey, sirs, what do you think? It's my new invention. Back it up, Cambot. It's called the BGC-19. And it's based on the premise that drummers just don't get enough attention way in the back. With the BGC-19, you can supply that all-important backbeat. still walk around and be a dynamic front man at the same time. Now what's your invention? That's it. That's it. That's good. That's right. Thanks. Well, it's called the BGC-19. It's based on the premise that most drummers being in the back don't get enough attention. Frank. Hmm? There. Oh, 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 I didn't know it's wrong to stay. Who are you to judge? Well, Joel, under the circumstances, I'm afraid I'm going to have to stick it to you this week. Rocket Ship XM will assault your pop and folk sensibilities. It's a chillingly uninteresting assault of mind-numbing, gut-wrenching, brain-bloating non-action. Oh, a Lloyd Bridges movie? I guess I could handle that. Uh, Lloyd Bridges with Hugh O'Brien? No! And movie say oh! Robert L. Lippert presents... Hey, I showed on the BGC-19. I think they really liked it, but... Cool. There's a new guy. That new guy stole it. Hey, look. Lloyd Bridges. By this time, his lungs would be aching for air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hugh O'Brien. Ready? Here we go. Don't, Don't get, get your, your hopes up, up too high. Cause when it's all said and done, it's a Lloyd Bridges movie. If you're looking for something good, then in a world from now, you're going to be weaving. Communism by Clarence Marx. Ice cream by Frank Heath. Gas by Betty Sinclair. Uh, Cowboy hits by Clarence Steens. Finance by Don Cash. Vibes by Orville Hampton. Chapstick by Jerry Shepley. Stupid name by Ferdy Grophy. Guy. Oh, Murray, the ceiling needs painting. Uh, yeah, cheer is. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that guy's trespassing right there. Hmm. Yeah, what's what's he trying to prove anyway? Yeah, Smart guy. Just let him carry watches. Hey, Petey, Horatia. Mm. Marry me, Steve. Well, your lifeline shows you'll meet four interest. Now wrap it around her neck. Either this man is dead or my watch has stopped. <laughs> so, not as good as us, is he? <laughs> Nothing to be alarmed about, though. Quite understandable under the circumstance. The weaker sex. The only one whose blood pressure is normal. Good one, Lloyd. X minus 17 minutes. And with you in the assembly hall in another minute. Assembly to today? That means no class. Right. Hooray. Thank you, Doctor, and good night. 
So, who's for ribs? Yeah, going down to Rudy's. Uh, we're yeah, going to go down to Marty's. Maybe. Got some onion rings, so you want to mm. fold off? I think I can handle it. I'm going to get some of them. I'm going to fold them. Probably. Get some. 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 In a few minutes, I'll be cutting these people open. Our panel tonight will be Robert Q. Lewis, Kitty Carlisle, Arlene Francis, and Dorothy Kill... Uh, no, I'm sorry, Dorothy Kilgallen won't be appearing tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, our first structure is called TAG. Every news service and newspaper is represented here tonight. All 12 newspapers and in the world. for your cooperation in the past, when complete secrecy was vital, we are grateful. Thank you for being gutless. However, I must make something clear. I'm wearing a bra. Although ours is not strictly a military project, a great deal of our research and knowledge falls within security regulations. Therefore, I must insist that you reveal only such information as appears in the authorized press release, which will be handed to you later. The young Republicans are in the back room. I'm sure that out. we can all recall the wild tales of the flying discs, flying saucers, spaceships, Frisbees, and who knows release. what imaginative creations. The press is to be commended for discounting, in most instances, these premature rumors, and so helping to minimize public apprehension. Tonight, you are invited here to witness an important event. My outing. You are all familiar with our previous work in sending robot missiles into space. Mm -hmm. That phase is at an end. I killed it, and I'm glad. Tonight, we will launch the first manned spaceship. Then we love. The RXM. Rocket ship expedition moon. Mm -hmm. X minus 15 minutes. Pencil out. Does uh, Forever, expedition a man start with an X? dreamed of visiting the nearest of heavenly bodies. Some for adventurous, fantastic reasons. Others, like ourselves, because they visualized a successful lunar expedition others to as get the first chicks. step toward practical interplanetary travel hmm. Hmm. today there is even the possibility that an unassailable base could be established on the moon to control world peace our kind of world peace i will now introduce to you the head of this expedition and his crew he's a widower who enjoys Dr. long Carl walks on Ekstrom, the beach and parasailing designer of the rxm and as you all know, one of the most brilliant physicists of the day, and an old friend. Dr. Lisa Van Horn, Rudy his Trump most Trump. able co-worker and assistant, doctor of chemistry. And, and an old friend. Colonel Floyd Graham, pilot. And, and an old Mr. friend. Mr. Harry Chamberlain, astronomer of the Mount Wilson and Palomar Observatory staff. Dirk Squarejaw. Mr. Chamberlain will serve as navigator. I never liked him. Major William Corrigan. Engineer. Comic relief. I shall now ask Dr. Ekstrom to outline the flight plan for you. Carl? Uh, thank you, darling. Hey, I mean, Larry. Oh, no hurry. Now, Rommel will be at base camp here. The distance between the Earth and the Moon at its closest proximity is 238,000 miles. Neat, huh? We expect to cover this distance in approximately 48 hours. New York Times, spit your gum out. The first flight will be the ascent to an altitude of 300 miles. From the start, while we pass through the troposphere and stratosphere, until we reach the ionosphere, the flight will be controlled by our automatic pilot. Name Timmy. After we have climbed through the atmosphere, we will turn the rocket into a parallel course with the surface of the Earth. In flying parallel with the Earth's surface, we receive added boost from its rotation. And we'll be collecting uh, bonus coins and mushrooms X and for extra guns. Minutes. We baked a rocket earlier in a 450 degree The RXM is what is known as a multi-stage or step rocket. At uh, this Cape point, Velocity, the rocket the becomes section, engorged with the astronauts. The speed will be jettisoned. The nose section, which is a complete rocket containing enough fuel for the entire trip and also containing our cabin, overcomes the gravitational pull of the Earth and heads in the direction of the Moon. Then we stop for After a quick snap. After we have snap. passed the equilibrium point where the Earth and the Moon's gravities are in balance, we will reduce power to a minimum. The Moon's attraction will carry us the rest of the way. With the gracious guide and a long-handled spoon. Finally, we will reverse the rocket 
utilizing the thrust of its motors to make our landing. Ah, uh, could you repeat that part about the moon? A few more details which might interest you. The cabin is uh, pressurized and gyro-controlled, keeping us in a level position at all times. We carry radar for navigation, shortwave for communication. Eight tracks and cassettes and most in important, stereo. more than twice the amount of fuel we expect to use to keep well within the margin of safety. Like most American vehicles. Thank you, We still God. have a few moments, ladies and gentlemen, for questions, if any of you care to. Uh, the leaves of grass exam is on Friday, and remember, I'll be in my office Tuesday, but not Wednesday. Chamberlain. How do you fit into the picture? Do you, uh, do you have any family? Not that I know no, of. I, I've been living on mountaintops. I'm afraid it's too lonely for such opportunities. <laughs> have you ever done any flying? Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. But, uh, you're the navigator. But you must realize that inner solar flight requires far more exact and precise navigation than any earthbound voyage. Mm hmm Plus, that's incidental. It is? Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, as an astronomer, I can appreciate the perfect observation conditions on a body without atmosphere. And you can. Such as our moon. Do you realize that within one oh, hour... I've got about 800 head grazing down That's there. That's a whole lot I of head. I bought my ranch with a flight pay I saved up during the war. Mm -hmm. How does your wife feel about you going? Well, she's a Texan, too. That means she's rock well, She knows stupid. that when a Texas man makes up his mind to do something, that's it. Period. <laughs> Say, I wish you fellas could have seen her face, so when I walked in and told her, in the uh, strictest confidence, of course, Honey, I'm going to the moon. <laughs> what did she say? Well, Not tonight, she, dear. She I got a headache. For a second and then said, <laughs> what for? They ain't got nothing there that we don't have more of right here in Texas. Uh, <laughs> but of course, by that time, my lungs time. were aching what? for air. <laughs> in the training room. <laughs> yeah, I've done more flying this last month, and I've done over 100 missions. Uh, oh. Great. Now, about your Wait, hair. This is the hottest crew I've ever worked with, especially in the brains department. Nice, nice brains. brains. Attractive, too. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I agree. But, uh, and you can quote me on this. Oh, may I? Unless you look like a test tube or a chemical formula, you haven't got a chance. And I do. But from the woman's angle, Dr. Van Horn, how does it feel making a trip like this alone with four men? But do the words dream come it's true, true ring a bell? I, I never thought much about it. Well, tell me, Dr. Isbay, any specific reason why one member of the crew should be a woman? I'd like to answer that, if I may. Hmm. The reason Miss Van Horn is making this trip is because of her pioneering research with monatomic hydrogen. And she's cute as a button. to develop the first rocket fuel, powerful and concentrated enough to make this flight possible. X minus 11 minutes. Uh, Ladies astronauts, get to the rocket. You may view the takeoff from the observation bunker and return to this room immediately afterward. Everybody return here after the takeoff. Uh, except the astronauts, we need them on the rocket. Oh, uh, you're an astronaut if you're wearing dungarees and you've been training for the last two years. No, I can't remember, were we supposed to stay? No, I think we're supposed to go to the rocket. Uh, he said, was it this way? We're going he said to the astronaut rocket. straight right back. Here. I'm an astronaut. You want to stop yeah. the ribs? Hello, we, Cleveland! We stop for some Broken ribs. Minus seven minutes. Oh, great. That's your support team? Three guys and a woody. Hey, I love that movie. Gyro control and compass okay. Batteries all up, autopilot's okay, everything's in order. Yeah, thanks for sharing. I've Jeez. checked these calculations many times, they're perfectly correct. I'll be the judge oh, of yes, that. Oh yes, all commercial flights have been detoured 100 miles south. Thank you. Well, I can't think of anything we've overlooked. All we need now is a, a little luck. <laughs> it doesn't seem real that the moment finally has arrived after all these years. It has been a long time. A long time for two men to work together. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we started, what they called us? Siegfried and Roy? Yes, and what are we now? Siegfried Maybe and Roy? Crackpots. The only regret I have is that I must stay behind. Your job is no less important, Robin. I know, but still... Uh, X minus six we'll six have minutes. Paris. Carl? Look, you're getting on that rocket, and that's all there is. Good luck. Good luck, everybody. Uh, can I catch a ride to the rocket? I'm only going to the gantry. Gantry? Okay? This car don't go anywhere near Gantry. You boys is lost. <laughs> Fail, Here in Pinamunda, there is a rockets are assembled, and once the rockets go up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department, you know. <laughs> um, can I still bet on Max Schmeling? Oh, good. Well, 
five minutes to go. There's no rush. As long as they're close. <laughs> I mean, this ain't rocket science. Let's take one more look. We won't be as close as this to Mother Earth for some time. Oh, just get on the rocket. Hey, look, it looks like an Al Jaffe Mad Magazine folded. You know, you could it fold does. it together. It would probably spell something like Ohio. Or... What? Huh? Hmm? What do you say? All right, come on, one at a time. Don't crowd, don't crowd. Run up there, Joel. Hey, that, that's what it's like to be born. They're coming up through the toilet. I'm positive. Yeah? Yep. Uh, close the lid. There's a lady on board, please. Well, X minus four minutes. Last one out of the biffs, the rotten egg. Room seal. Oh, that's you, Bill. <laughs> I was about to Everything cut you up in the coat hanger. Call me Cobra. Put a new float while I was down there. Cut me up with X a coat hanger. <laughs> hey, that guy's not kidding. Nag, nag. No change of flight plans discussed. First seven minutes of flight, controlled by automatic pilot. Pilot's ready. But he has a question for you. Seven minutes, straight ascent. Straight ascent from starting point. Starting thrust using all tail assembly engines, 2,300 tons. Right. Uh, straight, no chaser, twist of mine. Fuel mixture? Hydrogen and oxygen plus A12. After 120 seconds, hydrogen and oxygen plus A14. After 340 seconds, hydrogen plus A16. After 560 seconds, A16. Right. Any questions? Yeah, what's A16? Minus two minutes. I resent him. Good luck. Well, I'm pushed. I'm turning in. I'll do the honors, little lady. <laughs> Good night, Rockford, Dad. Good night, Mike Nelson of Sea Hunt fame. Good night, guy who looks like Mr. Whipple, a little like Walt Disney, uh, maybe Mr. Mooney. X Good night, Evan Clark. Good night, guys in the bunker. Good night, junior high school custodian closet like room. Did I leave the water seconds. running? Oh God, I need this job. X minus 40 seconds. Sure hope Jimmy brought the Camaro in. X minus 30 seconds. By this time, my lungs were aching for air. X minus 20 seconds. I hope this new chin holds out. X minus 10 seconds. They're at the post. And they're off. Three, two. Muffins are done. my lungs. Buddy Epson likes this ride. Bye. Bye. Get out of my body. I can't see. Bye. Well, that's a wrap. Enjoy the buffet. We will attempt to establish radio contact with the ship. The rest of the movie takes place in space. You can all go home now. Now they think of radio contact. Those are little miles. And those are big miles. Good morning. Ooh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ooh. Ooh. Rise and shine. Yep. <sighs> the human body can withstand these accelerations. But it certainly was never meant to. What did you expect? You're an astronaut, Dick. I feel like I've just tossed off a spooky bronze. I just ate my own bomb. Are you all right, Doctor? Oh, yes, you can't hurt an old campaigner like me. Unless you bang my head into right. a steel grate. Radar and gyro compass in order. Automatic pilot okay. Fuel consumption? Normal. Spinach Air quiche? Pressure. Almost um, done. 15 pounds. Uh, oh, we gotta get out of here. Oh, Suppose yeah. they had a war and nobody came. 
Where do you want to be in two years? the satellite of love take this time to salute some of the unsung heroes of today's film. The, the reporters, reporters of Rocket Ship XM. They are the unsung heroes that cuddle in back rooms nameless like so many cattle. Um, they are slightly out of focus and uh, we hold forth that they should not be forgotten. Doom. They are the journalists, the plucky personnel of the press corps, whose mighty pens and pencils dutifully record whatever drivel they are fed. Proud and passionate, nonplussed by the elegant beauty of the United States space program. And so we present to you the journalists of Rocket Ship XM. Uh, roll them slides, Cambot. Meet correspondent Donald Bunsen, science editor for the Ellen Meyer Flash. His skating seven-part series on stopcocks only w almost won him the 1953 Pulitzer Prize, 80626. The famous twin reporting team of Dirk and Kirk Berger, who cover both sides of a story, Dirk up front and Kirk always from behind. Their style is like an Oreo cookie, hard-biting reporters on the outside, a creamy story in between. On the left, Hugh Beaumont's brother Spike, hairstyle editor for today's Rugged Man. The boys in the city room say Spike can sniff out an ounce of pomade from inside a locked closet. Notice Spike has donned his flying wing lapel suit in preparation for today's plum assignment, the trend-setting hair helmet of Lloyd Bridges. Peering over Spike's left shoulder is foreign affairs correspondent for Digest Digest, Peter K. Wimple. Mild-mannered and meek to a fault, Wimple's motto is, when will it be my turn now, 9-1807. Ladies Home Foundation Garments is well represented by cub reporter Robert Bland. Here we see him gathering information for his upcoming piece on zero gravity girdles. Don't let that flint hard exterior fool you. He's wearing a Warner bra, trimmed with delicate peekaboo lace. Leering in from the back is chief editor of White Male Perspective, Wilhelm Studman visibly upset with the intrusion of a mere girl into a man's world. Studman keeps his distance because Chanel number no. five gives him hives. <laughs> uh, the boys in the press corps have nicknamed him the Golem. Dude, and there's so many more. There's Billy and Frank and Judy. Fast talking fatty and automatic slim. There's Roy and Scoop and Cold Type. Oh man, Mr. Peepers and the leech. And this guy, he's a woozle. His name is Peanut. These are the men and women of the press corps who will do anything for a story. Unless they're told to withhold information. <laughs> we, we salute the, the press corps, corps of, of Rocket, Rocket Ship, Ship XM. XM. Excelsior! your dream? Harry. It's a marvelous sight, isn't it? It is. You can study maps and globes and try to visualize. Then you get up in space and... experience. God, your hair smells good. It's hard to express it. Stand by to turn. Like this? Or like that? Like that? Okay, I got it. Hoist the mizzen, Mr. Cavendish. Lock the main sheet. Stand Blow by. me down. Four, three, five, two, twelve. turn. Look smart, me laddies. Hurr, me bunny tars. Weigh that anchor. Yeah. I can't Where even. There is love. Turn completed. We're pumped. Given of a flight speed, 3,400 miles per hour. Altitude, 360 miles. How do we stand on fuel now? I'm Three for it. Fire left in tail section. Mixture at present? A-16. Harry, contact the base. Ah, oh, right. Gary. Ah.
RXM calling BWS. RXM calling BWS. Over. Come in, RXM. Over to you. No, over to you. Stand by, BWS. Ekstrom speaking. Uh, the press is a bunch of wussies. Are you alone in there? Altitude, and are circling the globe at 3,400 miles per hour. We will increase speed gradually until we reach escape velocity of 25,000 miles per oh, hour. Traffic going on at the is very heavy well. today, and it seems to be jamming up around Spaghetti Junction. We'll be standing by. Tall and proud. 5,500 miles. Continue acceleration. Oh, bless the beasts and children. One tin soldier. Go placidly amidst the noise and haste, and remember what comfort. Hmm, it's a Chrysler building. Hmm. Hey, what happened to the rest of the night? Hey, who I'm left his we post? Right if it's darkness you want, wait till we enter outer space. And then look into my soul. 6,000. 6,200 miles per hour. Come on, look alive. You're getting scale. Let's go. Radar is tracking them perfectly. I had contact with them four minutes ago. Altitude, 1,600 miles. Mm -hmm. Speed, 21,000 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Constantly increasing. Mm -hmm. They are about to reach the state velocity. I win the baby pool. 22,000. Fail. Check the pressurizing system and oxygen. Okay. Boy, this kind of weather makes me feel right at home. You mean this musty stench? It's like stench? a nice, cool night in East Texas. 24,000. Take a reading the moment we attain escape velocity. Yes. Stand by. Why? Is something going to happen? Should we get ready for the boring part now? 25,000. Prepare to jettison tail section. Oh, wow. Start the front assembly motors. Only 40 seconds supply of fuel left. Uh, oh, was that me? <laughs> Dehydrated ice cream. Sorry. You ready? Ready. Go. Reduce power. <laughs> Dad, stop. We lost the camper. Look out. Well, we won't be trying that again. That was a little too close for comfort. Uh, we might be in a vacuum, but I sure felt the wind of that one. Uh, no, that was me. Harry, contact the base again. Attention base, RXM snafu, big BWS. time. Over. Come in, RXM. Over to you. Stand by, BWS. Give me that. We're on our way. We have jettison tail section and are now reducing power and speed according to plan until we come within the attraction of the moon. That's my man this up there. And yes, I think I love him. Return flight. Everybody aboard. This is Rocket Ship XM now BWS concluding our RXM. broadcast day. BWS calling RXM. Come in, RXM. <laughs> Come on, spread out. Give me some air. What's the deal? Ladies and gentlemen, we had hoped by having the entire press represented here tonight to eliminate any possible hearsay, rumor, or speculation from your reports. However, I regret to have to ask you to confine yourselves to the official news release. And stop writing about Tom and Rose. I promise to hand you any news that may come in as soon as it can be cleared. Uh, in other words, your trip little... here was a waste of time. You could have phoned it in. Where do you want to be in two years, Snowflake? I don't think I like all this dark. Well, it, it might be all right for sleeping, but for a steady diet, uh-uh. I used to hate the daylight because I couldn't work. But up here in this eternal night, it's a different feeling. <laughs> Fella can get used to anything, I guess, if yeah, he has to. Yeah, once they had a woodchuck. Yeah, I remember when I was first assigned to Jets. I said to the Colonel, Colonel, I joined this man's Air Force to fly an airplane. But nobody's going to hitch me to no Roman candle. And oh. nobody's going to strap uh, me to a diving board right naked inside. face down in a pool of marshmallow cream. Uh. Boy, oh boy. Ain't she pretty? What do you see, fella? It it says, not bad. It says Rand McNally. You see Texas? Texas? No, it's in the other hemisphere. Tell me your dream. Even so, from this distance, it would only appear a mere speck. A mere speck? Texas a mere speck? 
Listen, my friend, I, I'm broad-minded. I've, I've been around people, but don't you ever let any other Texan hear you say that. Mere speck. Hey, it was just an observation. Uh, what's my line? Oh, I, uh, better check my script here. Yeah, that's it. Now I swing into high and make my move. It's the funniest sensation. I feel like I'm walking in a cloud. No effort at all. You know, We're getting deeper in interplanetary space. Gravity will soon be practically non-existent. Hmm. Look, we got a stowaway aboard. <laughs> hey, whoa. I love this old jacket. I need you. <laughs> hey, we really are having fun, aren't we? Don't you think it's amusing? Hmm. Nothing funny about that, simply the lack of gravity. It's right. Oh, of course, Dr. Van Horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those straps sure get me every time. <laughs> now, don't get mad at me, but can't you ever relax? All these weeks, months, I've been watching you. Yeah, take a week work, off. Work, work. Well, I've been wondering, how does a girl like you get mixed up in a thing like this in the hmm. first place? You have to stand next to a guy like me. I suppose you think that women should only cook and, and, and sew and bear children? Isn't that enough? There's such a thing as going overboard in the other direction, too, yeah. If you don't know what's wrong. Hmm. Hmm. What is it? Hmm. Chauvinist detector just went off. Oh, false alarm. It's just the dryer. It's off kilter. I'll check the engines. Phil, pressurize the motor room first. Oh, who turned on the radio? And would you shut that music off, please? Motor room pressure up. Uh, Houston, we got a problem. Lloyd's uh, making moves on the bay here. Oh, man, if it's not one thing, it's another. Who forgot to flush? This thing goes into another thing and then comes out somewhere over here. And if she's running a bit clean, bang two cycles, look at your coiling. We're still drifting. Off to sleep. Well, we stared at it. That ought to fix it. Let's get it out of the air. After 14 hours and 12 minutes, we've covered 112,000 miles. We'll come within the gravitational attraction of the moon. Oh, that's not important right now. Without power, we're helplessly suspended in space. Even if we were already within the gravitational reach, we'd still be unable to make a landing. We need power to land. Checked and double-checked all connections. Primers, fuel injectors. Can't find a thing wrong. Mm -hmm. It must be the fuel mixture. Mm -hmm. Possible. Can't tell. Yeah. Dear diary, well, we're all going to die and it's the men's fault. Our fiery demise is imminent, but at least I have my health. Knock on wood. Oh, I saw the cutest thing on Arsenio last night. How much oxygen do we carry? Don't worry. We have plenty left for the trip. For the trip as planned, you mean? Oh, that hurt. What's this? Oh, great, a harmonica. As if this guy wasn't annoying enough. Out with the harmonica. What's next? Stories about his uncle in Milwaukee? Oops. <laughs> If you don't mind. Jeez. 
What a grouch. A differential six over M to the 30th power. The halfway check result is 262,000 to 341,000, both using tangent E, correct? Huh? Oh, sorry, I was drawing Bucky here. It must be the same. There's an error there. I've made no error, Dr. Ekstrom. I have to say that you made an error and discard your figures. I'm sorry. Jeez. Don't be. Surely you're not going to let emotion enter into this. Well, why would Certainly I? Not. We'll continue computing using my results as a basis. Blow hard. Except that I feel very strongly I should say that we should try both. We can't. To complete either calculation would take six to eight hours. We can't afford the time. It's either one or the other, Dr. Van Horn. But it doesn't have to be. You can't be arbitrary about imposing your will when these people's lives are at stake. Don't you realize that? You speak as calmly as if you were saying, pass the salt. Aren't you human? Are you made of ice? I'm human. Now shut up and pass the salt. I'm sorry. I apologize. For what? For momentarily being a woman? Thank you, Mr. White. Male family. reality. Now, shall we go ahead? Yes, Doctor. Tangent L9. If we make the eyes Tangent a little bigger. Meanwhile, back on Earth, silos are bursting with nature's rich bounty. Mount Palomar, California, the mighty 200-inch reflecting hail telescope is lofted skyward. Then, the eyepiece is blackened, and an unsuspecting scientist puts his eye to it. Comedy ensues. Sign here, Mr. Wilson. Hello? Yes? It's Dr. Hurley at Mount Palomar. Yes, Dr. Hurley? Yes? We located the RXM's position at 7.16 this morning. Since then, there has been very Voice little change. The pool. Apparently, their velocity is far lower than we anticipated. Are you sure, Doctor? I think everyone ought to come in and have a hot cup of cocoa and come inside and be nice and snuggly. I have some rather bad news. There's more film. Say, I never climbed inside this thing. Kind of funny in here. Look through the big end. Hmm, seat's warm. So, hmm, this is what we would have seen from the Hubble. Hmm. Neat. So I sing you to sleep after the lovin'. The wind that blows between the worlds, it cut him like a knife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think it's a line from Kipling's Tomlinson. Hmm. The poem about the chap, uh, someone in our fix. He couldn't get into heaven or hell. Suspended in space. Would you do something for me, please? Shut sure. up! I need those two graphs under Dr. Ekstrom's arm. I'm tired and shaky. I might awaken him. Yeah, and then put his arm in a pan of lukewarm water. Sleep for anything. I knocked over a 10-foot Christmas tree once, all decorated, my cousin's house, just from trying to do something when I was too tired. Oh, what does this story have to do with anything, Lloyd? I came rushing in. First they thought it was Santa Claus lying there with a busted tinsel star on my nose. I spoiled everything. Yes. Now you tell me that's not funny. <laughs> oh, he's waking up. Quick, tell that story again. Thanks. That's right. Why don't you take a minute off from that? She's pretending to work so she doesn't have to talk to you. You'll think clearer if you do. When I was flying in the war, we had a guy like you. Oh, so oh, shot me. Oh. Oh. Too bad. Hmm. Blue is top. We had to put him in section eight. Held it in too long. Never let down a second. Never tasted human flesh. You're right. I'm not even thinking straight anymore. I must be no tired. Like I'm almost face. interested in what you're talking about. Let's get out of here. Oh, here, I'll grab you. Oh, there we go. Out. Yep. Okay. It's about donut shapes. Now, did I or did I not address the topic of selective gravity, Mr. Crow? Uh, uh, well, we did uh, global and uh, uh, what's the other thing? I don't. Shh. 
Mr. Crow, please try to pay attention. This is for your benefits. Yes, sir. Sorry. All right. Now, selective gravity is the ease of which fish line... Or, or wire, sir? Or wire can be attached to an object to make it float. Oh, like a biscuit. Uh, we'll get to that. Anyway, the object you're going to be floating has to have a high degree for humor or levity. Just a little joke for the TAs there. Now, I'm going to be floating some objects here. Uh, with wire? With wire, uh, and you're going to tell me if they're funny or not, all right? First, we start off with a coat. Funny uh, or not funny? Uh, funny? Right, funny. Next, Cam, I'll bring it over to the right here a little bit. A wrench, funny or not funny? Uh, I'd say funny. Right, funny, finally. A harmonica. Oh, 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 Funny or not funny? Oh, 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 Okay, Crow, Crow. Uh, um, I forgot the question. Funny or not funny? Uh, funny. Are you sure? No, uh, not funny. It was funny. Stick oh. to your guns, Crow. Now, I'm going to be showing you some flashcards. You'll be awarded 20 points for every correct flashcard. Oh. These are objects that are funny or not funny when they're floating. All right, start things off. Sand. Oh, uh, not funny. Right, okay. Orange juice, funny or not funny? Uh, uh, funny. Right, next, a baseball. Uh, funny. Wrong, not funny. All right, woodchuck, funny or not funny floating? Funny. Extremely funny, next, funny or not funny floating? Sally Field. Uh, not funny. Right, next, funny or not funny floating? Sebastian Cabot. Funny. Right, extremely funny, but impossible. Finally, the rules get a little blurry here, guys. Christopher Reeves in Superman. Funny or not funny floating? Uh, not funny. Right. Christopher Reeves in Monsignor. Funny. Right. Now, Christopher Reeves kissing Michael Caine in Death Trap. Oh, funny. Right. Finally, Gallagher. Funny or not funny floating? Not funny. Extremely unfunny. Mm -hmm. Now, we go into the lightning round. Cambot put it up on the screen and magic voice. Let's have the password. The secret password is things which are funny floating. Uh, you take your shoe off with this. Uh, a piece of cheese. Uh, a come along. Uh, a shoehorn. Um, right. Uh, you, uh, keep meat in this. Uh, your mouth? Uh, right. Um, uh, a juggler. Uh, boring things? A juggler. Uh, Hackney. Things at a Renaissance festival. Uh, bad actor. Uh, things uh, you say to a bishop. Uh, pass, pass. Um, a flashing light. Uh, uh, sale of Kmart. Flashing light. Buzzer. Times Square Death Midnight. shaking. Um, things that happen at movie sites. Yeah, that's it! Movie sites! Oh! Something no human being ever saw before. Um, a frogman. A duck-billed platypus. Scuba gear. Um, uh, no, a piece of lint. It lives in your stomach. Oh, oh no. Boy Bridges. Never mind. You know, it's funny. One never thinks of the Earth that way, as a dying planet with nothing to give out but reflected light. Oh, that is romantic. Think I'll go slit moon. my wrists. You don't speak so disrespectfully of the moon. And whatever you do, don't say anything about Texas. I've done some of my best work by moonlight. Boom! <coughs> Found its light very effective. For navigation? For any purpose. Don't underrate it. Moonlight's potent. You're speaking of uh, its effect on men and women? No, tree frogs. On women. I don't need this stuff myself. Oh, you're immune. No, I'm Lloyd. That's the immune. Just don't need it. But did you have a park in an open convertible on the cliffs overlooking the Pacific? And then drive off oh, laughing night, maniacally? A big moon hung up there like a lantern. The blue light from it walking across the water. Radio playing a nice tune. Dead body Waves in the trunk. Swishing on the beach. Bag a quick line. No, I, uh, perhaps unfortunately, I never had the time, well, nor the thought, line. to do anything much beyond my profession. Now, don't tell me that you never looked at that old moon except for astronomical reasons. You're right. I have. In Rome once, and in Switzerland. Rome, Switzerland? Lake Lugano. What a nice stroll. Stroll? Yes. Yes, we walked slowly around the edge of the lake for two hours. I never stopped? No. And then I measured the velocity of our warm taste. It was lovely there. The water black like cold coffee. The moonlight like flecks of ice cream floating on it. 
parking lot like a Libby Land dinner. Quick, somebody get her a sandwich. Oh, but that was so long ago. Another world. Yeah, the Earth. Fine scientist I am. Michael Feinstein? Daydream. It's good for you once in a while. It's wonderful. I suppose it is, but... Not now. I'm going to be sick now. I still say it. Say what? Yes. yes. That moonlight's effective stuff. You're quite right. Where do you want to be in two years? If only... What effect a double dose like this would have on a convertible? Would it rust? Crumble? Have to put it up on blocks. Nothing. Skip it. Meteorites! Big ones, too! Screamers! Wow. That one looks like my golf stuff. Looks like buttery caramel corn. Please visit our snack bar. I'll have a sprite, please. Thanks, Mr. Crow. Way to go, kid. Who needs a drink? I know I do. Boy, I've been through some pretty heavy flack in my day, but that's the worst I've ever had thrown at me. Yeah, yeah, we know Heavenly in Texas. Flack. <laughs> Say, that could be a musical. Maybe somebody don't want us to get where we aim to get. Yeah, the god of grammar. Mm -hmm. Oh, cheer up, Harry. After what we've been through, we'll get there, all right? Maybe it'd have been better if one of them had struck the ship. At least have been sudden. Probably wrinkle my shirt. Quick. You know, are you gonna cry now, baby? Now, your computation? Dog ate them. We have to add 12% O3 to A16. Right. 12% O3 to A16. <laughs> this means we'll have to rearrange some of the fuel tanks and all the connections. Boy, it'd take a rocket scientist to explain this. I will replace these H tanks. And uh, drop the some of the bridesmaids and order a smaller cake. The motor Happy now? Pressurized. Think you can manage a half ton tank? Oh, sure. Down on my ranch, I used to throw a little old thousand pound steer over my shoulder every morning. Then I yeah, married a her. Little bull you were throwing. Get down on the toilet, you chromo. Jeez. Let me get this straight. We go down here and just stare at stuff again until we fix it. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, it's your blink light fluid, all right. Uh, want I should check your muffler belt, too? All right, Samson, let's see you do your stuff. Think I was kidding, huh? Hmm. You'll never prove it to me here. What's our Greek column doing down here? Doctor, can we be quite sure these proportions are safe? We never proved them by experiment. The mathematical theory is beyond question. Oh, three, though. Sometimes it behaves unpredictably. Mm -hmm. Woman's intuition again. Oh, there he goes with the woman thing again. Great, brother. 12% O3 to A16. 12% 03 to 816. You sunk Chart my battleship. 32 degrees. Present position is... We'll correct course when we're in powered flight once more. All right. All ready? Ready. Stand by, everybody. It's going to get nuts. Nice pose. Well, she's happy. Got to hang on. Oh. Mrs. Carmichael, this is your fault. Now, oh, Ricky. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, excuse me, this is my stop. That went rather well, I think. I did it, I, Mr. Airspeed. He's ball peen. That's needle nose. We did it all. Will you
you repeat that again, Dr. Hurley? I uh, need one of those inflatable donuts. Are you certain? Oh, yeah. No solid food either. Uh, yes. uh, scratching irritates us, though. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it could be worse. They are completely off their course. Those guys could at least stop shopping at the same store. Moving mm -hmm. with incredible velocity. Out into limitless space. Heavy. I can't understand it. Come on, scatter you guys. One bullet could get all of us. All right, who made the Kool-Aid? Love was cooling in the mist. Oh, it's 715 in deep space. We're still on the business end of a beautiful day. We got some Bruce Horns being arranged in the funeral from Paula Abdul. She awakes with a hairball and the worst breath of the day. <gasps> Eat an apple. Oh, I'm late, honey. Could you drive me to work? Oh, we're in space. Well, you better grab a hefty bag and start at it. You know, one time this happened to me. I was in a convertible, and I... Shh. I'm not getting enough oxygen. No. <laughs> My lungs are, well, you know. Bill! Bill! Open the window! Oh, that was the worst party ever. Who invited the fate of Kai's? <coughs> Dr. Extra! Dr. Extra! Dr. Extra! Wake up, old guy. Gail Gordon. Oh, quick. Here, you move his mouth. I'll do the voice. Say hello to the folks, Bobby. Hello, folks. How long has it been since? Hey, that's rather I'm personal. Right How are the others? <laughs> I think everybody's going to be all right. Hmm. <sighs> nice stash. It must have been days. Fortunately, the engines were turned off. When? I must have turned the levers off when I blacked out. But at what speed? You know the consequences of a body moving with unchecked velocity in free space. Uh, we're our own grandparents? So we made a little detour. Now we're gonna double back to that last road sign. Come on, let's go to work. Uh, this is a spaceship, Tom, not a car. Know what I'm saying? Remember that blue thing? Good. What do you know that's bad about the big blue thing? We want to be on it. Dig? Can't be. The instruments must have gone crazy. <laughs> They're certifiably insane. <laughs> I don't think so. By heading into space, we've added the Earth's orbital velocity to our own. And that's bad, right? We're really moving. I should say at least several times the maximum speed of your indicator. Not to mention it smells okay, like progress, a bus Harry. station in here. We'll at least have an approximation of our position very shortly. Fuel consumption? No, thanks. Hey, I've had just enough. a moment. Doctor. What? I cut in resistances to raise the scale. But look. Well, that's very pretty, Steve, but what does it mean? Acceleration. Definite acceleration, but the motor's off. That's impossible unless... This can't be correct. What? I seem to be getting a strong reflection of impulse directly ahead 50,000 miles. That explains it. Explains what? We've been looking in a mirror. Yeah. I've got to touch all of you. Duck, 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 goose. Unbelievable. It couldn't be mere chance. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Keep talking. Yeah. Out with it? Yeah. Out with it? I don't quite know how to tell you it's so. Uh-huh. Spit it out, Brad. I could have even dreamed that it yeah. cut to the chase. An incredible set of circumstances. Get mm -hmm. on with it. Precisely mm -hmm. and exactly We're time. Listening. We're here. Hey. Would carry us unerringly through space to our most congenial planetary neighbor, We're Mars. With We're with you. I would... Mars? As in the candy bar? Wow, looks just like our carny. Utterly unbelievable. No, yeah, I suppose they have a bigger Mars than Texas, huh? Mars. What do you know? Well, of all the dumb luck, I'm sure no what way. Mars. Here we are in endless it means space, you know, and we park right as as in front as as of Mars. We <laughs> just pause and observe respectfully while something infinitely greater assumes control. Heavy. I believe this is one of those times. Hmm. Yes, we should go on, of course. Our overall fuel consumption was... 42 percent. 
And that's good. The Martian landing. Approaching a planet with atmosphere is far easier than the lunar maneuver. And that's good. Certainly, we should warn him. We should be betraying an unprecedented opportunity to do otherwise. And I'd suggest there's a couple of little things we might do. This ship isn't going to land itself, you know. And that's bad. What's he mean by that? Splat. Mark. <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> We well, express compute the correct crust and fuel mixture to comply with anticipated conditions. And then we drink. 12,500 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Oxygen at surface level, 15%. Check. Prepare to change the parallel course at distance 1,500 miles. Right. Check. And wipe that dopey grin off your face. I've located them. Located what? Our clean shorts. <laughs> well, where are they? Here, take a look. Hey, Tex, what do you say we blast them just for fun? Huh? <laughs> For old times' sake. Know about that? Well, I know the little ones. The Is it all right to call Texas a mere spec now? Man, I never liked that guy. Hey, now, Linus is different. His hair is kind of crazy. You draw him like this. At, at 50 miles altitude, we will execute a turn of 90 degrees, bringing the rocket into landing position. Could you uh, sharpen this? Since the gravitational attraction of Mars is only half as powerful as that of Earth, a thrust of 1,200 tons will be sufficient to make the landing. Fuel? Hydrogen and oxygen plus A12. Oh, that's my favorite blend. Water. Shaken, not stirred. Ah, 170 miles. He's getting a facial. His pores are opening. Ooh. 65. Oh, that one looks kind of like a horsey. Hey, and that one looks like our friend Dana. 60. Yeah, I can see it too. It looks like Dana. And I see the horsey. Miles. Sneed. Stand by to turn. 50. Turn. Coming about hardily. Watch the boom. I see the great white. Quick word. They're in the spin cycle. Must add fabric softener. Uh, uh, socks are sticking to the side. Uh, uh, uh. <coughs> hey, we're half a bubble off plum. Whoa. Uh. <sighs> 90 degree turn completed. Reduce power. You know, once I was on a tilt world. Shut, Shut up. up. Hey, Barry. Reverse stock footage coming in for a landing mode. Oh. Altitude 40 miles. 38 miles. I only hope the light holds out. It's getting dark down below. My chin looks great in here. Love me. Prepare to increase thrust at altitude 15 miles. We'll park it by the Chrysler. It's getting darker rapidly. As far as I can make out, the terrain is suitable for landing. Yeah, that's a good thing, Altitude because six miles landing. Five miles, 20,000 feet, 18,000. Rest at present, 1,250 tons. Stand by to increase power. 15,000. Bottles of beer in the wall. 12,000. Bottles of beer in the wall. 10,000. Bottles of beer 8, in the wall. 8,000, 7,000, 6,000. We're losing altitude too fast. Increased thrust to 3,000 tons. Uh, that's this thing, right? Got it. 4,000 feet. 3,000. 2,000 feet. Reduce thrust slowly to 1,250 tons. Third floor, notions ready to wear. 1,000. 500. <laughs> oh, look, there's a gantry on space, right? First floor. Like they don't even care. Nice work, Floyd. Oh, oh, thank you, Andy. Oh, what a fine landing. Yeah. Mars extending us a welcome. Mm. Extending us a welcome. Uh, we're prepared to disembark first thing in the morning. In the meantime, we can rest and get our equipment ready. Oh, that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> I love equipment. Yeah, I've been itching to get into one of these things. It's my Sorry, grandma's skin. You, Bill. We have atmosphere here. We won't need pressure suits. Oh, man. Which works greatly in our favor, too. We can accomplish so much more unencumbered. 
As far as equipment's concerned, we'll take oxygen masks, camera, paraffin. What about data for the return trip? Yes, yes, data exact, for the return precise, trip, too. Better begin preparation. Yes, of course, you're right. We have so little time here, such an opportunity. Let's think about that for a little while first. Well, let's turn in for the night. Been a full day. Come on and march your double time. Come on and march your double time. Let's sing a song by Michael Feinstein. Sing a song by Michael Feinstein. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. Clap on, clap off. The clapper. We thought it would be funny if we blackened the eyepieces on his binoculars. Let's see what Walt Disney thinks. Hmm. Look at the rock formation. Looks ahead. like Arizona to me. Notice the abundant coloration. Just Green, more of the same. Yellow, hmm. black. Raspberry red, That's lemon yellow, to. orange That's orange. Mineralization. Manganese, copper, nickel, pitch blend. Sphagnum, zircon, molybdenum, sternum, aquarium, colitis, spackle. Is taking out a claim here? I'm just making sure we can find our way back. You talking to me? My hose goes right into my sternum. Uh, who brought the sandwiches? Uh, sandwiches? If we don't find a bush or a tree in the next two miles, well, just go anywhere. I've heard that said about Texans, too. Uh, what did he say? Ah, forget it. Let's go collect some maggots. The drum noise are pretty bad. The drum noise are pretty bad. I'm starting to like the Rockford Dead. I'm starting to like the Rockford Dead. Uh, this must be the creamy nougat center mm. of a Mars. Hey, look, guys, there's the Statue of Liberty, and there's James Franciscus and Charlton Heston. You did it. You finally did it. Damn you all to hell. Hey, look at all the driftwood. Hey, we could make cool stuff out of this. Gosh, those stuckies are everywhere. All right, who wants a nut log, anybody? I'm gonna get some roasted chicken. Yeah. Onion rings? Onion yeah. rings. No, it's not onion rings. I'm gonna get a whole loaf of them. Oh. I want a toy. Hey, what kind of lens uh, you got in that camera there? Well, it's neat and all, but I'm tired. Hey, this Bart Simpson stuff is everywhere. Now let's not spend all our money here. We're only in the outskirts of town. Yeah, there's a gas station near my house that sells this junk. Sounds like your head, Texan. The mind that can Got salt shakers this big in Texas, country boy? At least the equal of this. A fire from Pier 1. Do you think that a complex organized society existed here once? Yes, from all indications. 
thousands of years ago. I wonder how it happened. Billions, billions of years ago. But then it would have created a depression like a moon crater. No, this wasn't caused by a meteor. This was no boating this accident. Was definitely blast effect coupled with intense heat. I think it was street it was gang. I, I, think. I think it was a drive-by shooting. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look, a big cow cream pitcher. Hmm. Huh. My grandfather went to Mars, and all I got was this crummy T-shirt. Oh, that hey. looks like an oven rude to me. Oh, look, it's a theremin. You'd better stop. The radioactivity is at the danger level. And uh, that's a bad thing. Right. Ironic, isn't it? The mind of man, wherever you encounter it, Earth, Highest attainments of human intellect always the to self destruction. Sorry. You can't swing a dead cat Ask without hitting one of his boring speeches. One vast ruin like this. Hmm? Well, do you think we ought to start back to the ship? I agree to that. We're neither prepared nor equipped for any stay here. We have supplies for several days. Let's use this precious time as effectively as we can. Let's all take a nap. A day here is more valuable than years of research on Earth. Well, okay then, let's get going. Okay, people, half an hour and we'll meet at the hot sands, all right? And there, on the handle, was a hook. Ooh. What a lesson here for our world. One blast. Now, Thousands what did we learn today, Jim? Not to steal. Well, that was like yesterday, that. right? Oh. Could there have been any survivors? I should hate to think so. What line, please? Line. Line. We still don't know all the genetic effects of radiation, but that it will produce mutations, malformities, disfigurements, blindness, that much we're sure of from research. A blast like this? I should hate to think that any survived. Now, good night, everybody. Why don't you try to get some rest? If I ever get back to Texas, I'll know better than to leave again. Oh, shut up. Yes. Ever since we left, all that's been out of you is Texas this and Texas that. Well, listen, Bob, I've been to Texas and it's not all that great. Jeez, I'm leaving. No, we better get out of here. I'll carry you. It was a dark... <laughs> What do you guys want to do with your life? What are your dreams? I mean, where do you want to be in two years? Beauty walks the razor's edge. Someday I'll make it mine. Bless the beasts and the children. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you walk near? All I want is a tall ship and a star to sailor by. Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night. Half-breed. That's all I ever heard. We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. But the stars that we reached were just starfish on the beach. Games like this always got beer around. What? Huh? Oh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, fill with mingled cream and amber, I will drain that glass again, such hilarious visions clamber. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hey, there's a ship out there. Who said that? I did. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, no, 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 there's a, really, there's a ship outside. 
Oh, it just goes on like that? No, outside. There's a ship outside. Oh, you mean outside the bounds of earthly restraints? No, no, out there. See, look. Oh, yikes. Hey, there's a ship right. out there. Hey, Camba, oh. give me uh, rocket number nine. I need an exterior of the ship. Let's go, you guys. There's somebody outside the ship, and they're trying to hail us. Huh? Check it out on the Hexfield view screen. Hello, puny earthling. Oh, hi. Oh, oh, I think she's talking to Joel. I have come these many light years to find you, and now you and your daughter are doomed. Maybe uh, she's talking about Gypsy, Joel. You and your daughter will never escape the power of the Dark One. Dark One? Doug, Doug Warren? I haven't seen him since high school. Dark One? I don't know any Dark One. You dare to mock me? See if you can mock me in the room of questions. Uh, Joel, who is she and what the heck does she mean? Just let me handle this. I know how to talk to these space vixens. Uh, I could never give in to your demands. You'll never get any satisfaction out of me. Not even a little? No, I... God, she's ugly. Okay, well, then gotta go. Bye-bye. Wait, Kick wait. Kick it down. To wait, 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 Joel. Uh, maybe she can help us get back down to Earth. Yeah. Can you can you rescue us or help us? To Earth? I, I don't know. What does it look like? Oh, we have to get down to Earth. Mm, how nice for you. Well, gotta go. Ciao. Bye-bye. Talk. Oh, Kick uh, it down. I live to serve you. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, hey, oh. hey. Uh. Oh, man. What a strange woman. Kind of makes you think, though, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Guess you don't have to be a rocket scientist to uh, pilot a rocket ship. <laughs> well, at least we've still got each other, you guys. Yeah. No matter where I serve my guests, it seems they like the kitchen best. Yeah. And if you don't believe the dead come back to life, <laughs> you should see this place around quitting time. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice day for a white wedding. We got commercial sign. Hey, I'm moved. Who said that? Oh, was that Blake? Oh, uh, Yeats, perhaps, or Rod mm. McEwen? Hmm. You don't have to be crazy to work here, but help. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, here in the day for night scene, it would be a good place for a water slide over there, don't you think? Go out and discover a new race and show them all. This is my side of the mountain. I'll show those guys. I'll live in a tree. Yeah, that's great. Make boomerangs. Snuggle close, friend. I'll show them. I'm kind of tired. Hmm? Oh, man. Either I'm high or there's about 50 Martian dudes down there. Oh man, game over. Oh, I gotta lay off the butane. Hey, they're shooting 2001 down there. Well, all right, Dr. Ekstrom. Reese, <laughs> young blood. Maybe I'm crazy, oh, but I just saw our ancestors and they're walking erect. You squirting glue in that mask? It wasn't a nightmare. I haven't slept at all. I tell you, I saw them. Where? Uh -huh. Right up here. And when I yelled, it, they disappeared. All right, let's go see. It was the cast of Chorus Line, I swear. Let's all run like fools towards the danger. Serpentine, everybody. Incoming wounded. I know they're around here. Right here. And when they heard me, they, they disappeared in there. Yeah, and, and you were there, and you, and you, and everybody. It don't take a Navajo to figure out what caused these. Yeah, and we're rocket, rocket scientists. scientists. Now maybe you'll agree to return to the ship. We can't stop oh, now. Come on, we sissy must pants. Find out what kind of creatures they are. Oh, well, they definitely it's have feet. It's important. We don't know how many there are. And suppose they're hostile with one rifle and a pistol. We won't have a prayer. That's the chance we have to take. And you're taking it. You wait here. I'm going ahead. Now, this kind of thing is just my me. Mind if I come along? Thank you, Ben. I with you, Doctor. No, Floyd, you three stay. But I... I'll have to make that in order. Come on, Bill. 
Yep, let's go kill something we don't understand. Yeah, I'm bringing my pool cue in case they start ranking on our women. Has anybody got any lines? Hmm. Well, um, we'll just wait here then, shall we? Right. Uh, we could play Pictionary. Oh, I know. I spy with my little eye. Wait. There they are. There they go. Wait. No. No, don't. Don't shoot too high. Lead them on. I'm falling and I can't get up. Having just pains. You know, she's not half bad. Wonder if she'd like to evolve up. She's moving up in the food chain in my eyes, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Hello, Federo. Now, we've never met before, Why? have we? No, it's okay. He won't tell another story, I promise. Oh, my goodness. Jeez, it, it's an entire race of mimes. We've got to get back and warn Earth. Oh, yuck. Unfortunate skin. Atomic age to stone age. In less than 30 minutes, guaranteed. Message coming in, sir. Got rocks that big in Texas, Bill. <laughs> Thank you, but I already have one of those. Uh, sorry to have interrupted your production of the lottery. Look, thanks for the rocks. Uh, here's some bullets for you. I guess I embarrassed them in front of their chicks. Head. I'll do the voice. Murdering savages. No Floyd. Poor, fear crazed, despairing Richard. Brother, he's dying and he's still giving Pity speeches. Pity them. Don't talk anymore. You must get back to Earth. Tell them what we found. Maybe this will. Will. Will what? Fall down? Play dead? What? Now what do we do? Got the keys. Thanks, you've got plenty. At least he hasn't been hit by a rock yet. Oh, good shot. Uh, it's just my spine, sir. Come back and you'll get more of the same. Velda. Velda. Take that. Well, that could have gone better. Help, Mr. Nonsense. Wizard. Run away! Run away! Don't be an astronaut anymore! Scooby, we gotta get out of here, Scooby! Razzle, 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 razzle. 
time for this one to come home. <laughs> Where do you want to be in two years? I wish Harry were able to help. It's impossible to get a precise result without radar. Harry, you've done a wonderful job. We should have fuel enough for landing. When will we feel the Earth's gravity? As soon as there's an increase in speed. According to elapsed time and velocity chart, almost any minute now. But without a check from Harry, it's... I know we're in a tight spot. Where are we, we going to cash a now. check out here? <laughs> Lloyd, you're flying a rocket, not balancing the household budget. Get it with it. Okay, now, uh, where did you put the charts? Go, uh. There, all better. Any sign of increase in speed? Not yet. How's the plot doing? You know, you're a pretty swell girl, Lisa. Oh. Now that girl? everyone's dead, I'm a pretty swell I'm girl, huh? I'm not Dr. Van Horn anymore. No, just Lisa. Doing her job. No, I don't see it that way at all. I see a woman sweet, gentle. And when I get back to Earth, I'm going to call this girl. But in the meantime, I love the, the one you're with. Somehow, no. <laughs> but I am, you know. The same, I mean. Well, maybe I've changed then, but I feel that... I've never known you before. Will you, uh, do something for me, please? Sure, what? Say my name the way you did a moment ago. Kooky Pants? Lisa. Oh, Lisa! Hey, Mr. Douglas, I see you're doing some shooshing. Uh, I'm calling VWS. What's the matter, boy? Come in, Dream about rabbits? Fire in Dead Rock Canyon? Come in, VWS. Oh, Ick, she's swabbing him with a jock strap. Thank God. They won't answer. They won't ever answer. Of course they will. Speed's increasing. We're gonna make it. Shut off the fuel. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, about that fuel, Lloyd. Well, the good news is that we won't make a big explosion when we hit the Earth. <laughs> hey. uh. Timmy, honey, where'd you put the extra fuel? I'm sorry. I wish I could help. Talk you heard what Floyd said. Everything would be all right. What about the fuel? We uh, we lost so much. Yes. Well, we'll have enough for a landing. He was thirsty. He drank it. Well, this should really test Lloyd's sunny disposition. How are we doing? Not so good. Well, what's the matter? Everything's worked out so far, right in the nose. We haven't got enough fuel for a landing. Have enough fuel for a crash? Not even for an approach. The motors were functioning perfectly before I shut them off. And one tenth capacity. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Maybe it's only the instruments. Yeah, just keep telling yourself that, Lloyd. It's so hopeless. So much for the power of positive thinking, Lost. huh, Lloyd? Could they steer Everything it into a lost. willow tree or something? All Dr. Ekstrom's work in vain. His work? Uh, what about your life? Now the world will never know the terrible truth we learned. No. Maybe there's still a chance. We must be close enough for shortwave. We'll try to contact the base. If we only could. We must report everything. Tell them... As much as we can. What we saw. The mistakes that we made. Okay, uh, story so RSM far. We got lost. Flew to Phoenix, got attacked. We're going to die. Doom RSM spaceship to Earth. Doom spaceship to Earth. Dr. Fleming. Yes? Radio control room, just call. They've contacted the RXM. Oh, there's a mister. Oh, my God, my hair is on fire on line one, sir. 
You know, we really should have gotten adjoining offices. This is really quite a long walk when you think about it. I think Rudy's. You're going to Rudy's? Yeah, okay. There's too much interference. You better use these, Doctor. For what? I can't see a thing. Is this Strauss? PWS. Fleming speaking. Calling RXM. Come in, RXM. Help! Repeat that again, please, Dr. Van Horn. I said, help! H E L P. It's a great. Pronounced. What about Dr. Ekstrom? Uh, doornail? Daisies? Worm food? Throw up the sponge? How many feet under? Joined who? Who? Why the long face? But did he say he loved me? Life's over, friends. Come on, spread out, Scott. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> I thought worm food was a bit strong, Lloyd. you want to be in two years? Uh, I mean, two minutes. Lord, hold me. Hold me tighter. If I held you any tighter, I'd be in back of you. I'm sorry that we haven't had any time, that we didn't meet or know each other the way we do now. Hey, sooner. we've got the rest of our lives together. Oh, yes, yes, it is. Don't, don't. We can say that time is behind us, that we've had years together. Yes. I can tell you about a thousand wonderful hours we've spent together, because I feel we would have. It's all community service. Hmm. There's not that much difference between the future and the past. Not if you're no, You are high. Shouldn't we wake him? Why? So he can experience his own no. fiery death? Get your shoes on, honey. We're about to die. <laughs> Try not to be afraid. I'm not afraid anymore. Neither am I. Something happened like a great wave carrying us up, bearing us, protecting us. Oh, we're afraid of going. Oh, we scraped off the runway, sir. Yes. The men from the new syndicates are still waiting. All right, let them come in. Keep it down, boys. Dr. Fleming, the pilot and crew of Flight 19 International Airlines observed a strange object falling over Nova Scotia. Those were According my friends. According to the report, it could have been the RXM. My office has been getting the same story over the wires for hours. We know the RXM has been over you a long time. Is there any connection, Doctor? Why, Doctor, you've been crying. As yet, there has been no confirmation, but... Yes, I believe there is a connection. Then they all perished in the crash. No, two were lost earlier. But the flight must be considered a failure. A oh. failure? Every point of our Get activity has been out. established. It has proven that interspace travel is not only possible, but practical and enjoyable and for all members of the family. Information oh, there'll be carnage. Which may well mean the salvation of our own world. No, gentlemen. The flight of the RXM was not a failure. But a resounding success. Tomorrow we start construction of RXM 2. Oh, oh, no, not again. Mother, let's get out of here. Oh, look. Rotten day. Somebody stole my Woody. Oh, man, it's been such what a crappy, crappy day. day. Boy, 
Nothing more depressing than being locked in a capsule watching a movie about people dying in a capsule. Yeah, why don't you just show us marooned? We couldn't get it. Well, you wouldn't show terror at 30,000 feet in an airplane, would you? No. no. Yeah, and you wouldn't show Das Boat on a submarine, would you? Yeah, and you wouldn't show a Burt Reynolds movie to prisoners, would you? Yeah, and you wouldn't show Breakfast at Tiffany's at a jewelry store. Uh -huh. There! Oh, owie, 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 owie. Oh, oh, Don't you uh, have some uh, mail to read, Grog Blossom? Grog Blossom? Jeez, just say so. They're right here. Cambot, let's put this one up on the screen. It's kind of visual. Dear Joel, let me start off by saying I love your show, but I think it is time to get some new robots hey. to aid you in your guess to quest to find the dumbest sci-fi movie ever made. Sure, Kamba, Tom Gypsy, Tom Serbo, and Crow are great, but you need more guys to fill up the empty seats in front of the theater. Oh, I don't think so. Well, I guess that's it. Looks like you can bring us down, Frank. Okay, sure. Uh, no, you idiot. Tell them what you thought about the experiment. Uh, uh, that'll be 550. Pull ahead, please. Oh, never mind. Until next time, Jolly Cakes. All right, Frank, push the button. Oh, what did I do? Uh, it's okay. Hit shift. Clear. Okay, now hit the button. This one? That one. This one? This one. Sorry, he's new.